You're listening to Inside the Minds with Dante Marsh and Ryan Hyde. A podcast about life, lessons, and whatever the hell else they want to talk about. So I actually had thought that I was at your uh, the wall, the BC Lions Wall of Fame game, but I wasn't. I thought I was. Uh-huh. There. I missed that. I was at the one for uh, Carter, though. Eric Carter. You, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was, that was nice, wasn't it? It was nice. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I but, think they had more fans when I was there. You tell Eric Carter that when I was there, they put me on the wall. I had more fans than anybody, than G. Roy Simon, than uh, Brent Johnson. All the boys they got on the wall, I had more fans than them. <laughs> that's awesome. No, you put that in there. You put that in there. Tell G. Roy Simon that that's my brother from another mother and Brent Johnson the same. I had more fans than them when they went in. All right. <laughs> we'll make sure we let them know. <laughs> the uh my my computer tech says 13 minutes remaining. So we well, need to go get the plug then. It's Turn in the it plug. Up. Hey, jive ass turkey, it's in there. <laughs> so what were you Go, get somewhere where you won't lose your battery. No, nah, I, I'm plugged in. Is I had to man? Do you see what's behind me, man? Man, and I see. That, I'm throwing up the hooks too at the same time. That's a personal. That was made by Jay Roby, a capper from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. We grew up together. That's what it is. Give him <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kid. Yes, Lord. What's going on, brother? Man, trying to speak for the people. You got to speak for the people all the time, every time. Mm-hmm. I'm glad this is in Canada because if, if they aired in the United States, I'm going to get banned from all 52 states. <laughs> 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 and, 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 and one thing about it, I don't, uh, I'm not that dumb jock with the, what people think of football players, dumb jock. No, nah, I take you over to my trophy case and this master degrees and all different type of degrees up there too. So I want them to know that too. I'm just not no, just not an old football player that's broke up and can't make it in life. No, so, okay. So, so that's so that's one of the main reasons. Like me personally, that's why um, our podcast we're we're taking it down that lane. We want to. We don't. I don't want to sit here and talk about football shit all day. We, that's not what we're doing. We gonna get in here. We gonna have a real conversation. And I want you to be you. Can I be like Snoop? You can do what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, uh, you know this is this is this. Uh, hey, this is the United States. I got a job. Boy, that boy, that had that car. They know it was prop weed. It was sick of weed. <laughs> so do I? Do I need to go put on my BC line stuff too? No, I just I just woke up, brushed my teeth, and washed my face, and threw this shirt on. Oh, it's nine o'clock there, ain't it? Yeah, it's early, man. Man, I've been outside working already. Mm-hmm. And I got food on the grill. Welcome to episode three of the Inside the Minds podcast. Today's guest spent two seasons with the Oakland Raiders. He also spent time with the Minnesota Vikings and Kansas City Chiefs before coming north to play with the BC Lions. He is a two-time CFL West All-Star and a two-time Grey Cup champion. Please welcome to the show, Carl Kidd. Yeah, so let's get into it, man. So, Carl, you from uh, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, so let 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 let's talk a little bit about your uh your your, your first part of your legacy growing up in Pine Bluff out in Arkansas. Let's talk about it. Let's get into it. Well, uh, like you say, I'm from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. My mother. Uh, name is Lily Kid. My father's name was Carl Kid. He's deceased now. Um, I went to um, Dollarway High School where we won three state championships in football. I won one in track. Um, I was an all star, all state, all everything here in the state. Uh, football and track. I played baseball too. Um, I left, um, graduated from uh, Dollarway. I went to Northeast Oklahoma Junior College where I became a two time All American. Uh, as a cornerback, uh, we won a national championship um, in 1991. So that gave me four championships back to back before I even got started. One, uh, three in high school, 
one in college. Then I left there. I was the number one junior college player in the nation. I went to the University of Arkansas. Uh, there I was um, SC, all SEC and um, later got picked up after two years at Arkansas. I got picked up by the Oakland Raiders. And, um, you know, the rest is history. Uh, I played, uh, bounced around the NFL for a few years and uh, then uh, went north of the border and the best thing that happened to me. Won two great cups. How did you like coming to the West Coast, to my city, Oakland? And, Man, and, and I was, I'm, I'm I, I was a and coming from the South. It, it, the right, right. It, it was hard. It, it really was. But you know what? Uh, going to the West Coast showed me a different type of culture. It showed me that Black people, white people, Asian people, uh, Indian people, Hispanic people, everybody can live up under the same ram and, and, and treat each other right. That's what I got from the West Coast. Uh, the only thing I didn't like about the West Coast was the cost of living and the small. I hated that. The cost of living is too outrageous for what you get. Yeah. And the small just mess up your skin. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I, 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 can, I can pretty much assume, well not assume, I know, it's a it's a culture shock in, in some sense because I left Oakland and lived in Atlanta, Georgia for seven years. And, right. You know, even though Atlanta is you know metropolitan, well, you know you wasn't like when I, I I wasn't used to like different different people like even white people. Well, you know in, in the South is white people is black people. It ain't yeah. no it, it wasn't back then when I was growing up. It wasn't no Asian or I didn't see I didn't see those type of people. You know growing up, but then. When I got to the West Coast, I saw all different type of ethnic background. And that was amazing to me because I wasn't used to different type of people speaking to me. And you know, that was kind of weird. You know, you got you get a, a person, you know, of a different descent speaking to you, like really trying to conversate with you. And that was strange, but I, that's what I really like. Once I adapted to it, I love the West Coast. I'm a West Coast guy, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a Snoop Dogg. I'm a uh, I'm old West Coast. I'm I'm a Raider before I became a Raider. I'm an LA Dodger. Uh, I'm a uh, Oakland A's. I'm a Golden State Warrior, and I'm definitely a Los Angeles Laker, baby. LeBron James, <laughs> Kobe Bryant, Justin, uh, Kareem. <laughs> That's dope. That's dope. So yeah, I was I was uh, I was saying I can I can definitely dig it because I left. Oakland and went and moved to Atlanta for seven years, even though it was it was a uh, you know predominantly uh, you know black in this city. Ninety five percent black. Yeah, but you know nonetheless, I could tell the difference. It, it, it was a bit different. Right. <laughs> oh yeah. So after 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 you got to got your couple years in with the uh, with the Raiders, and then you were in Minnesota and you was in Kansas City. When did you decide? to go ahead and take a chance up north? Well, I, I saw the bullshit coming. Now, y'all said I could cuss. Okay, That's I saw the bullshit coming. You know, <laughs> you know, on a team like in the NFL, you know, it's, it, it, they already have their picks of who they gonna pick anyway. Regardless if you better or not, you're going in as a free agent or not. You know, uh, in, in my own personal belief, I think I went to the Raiders I should have went to the Raiders last. A lot of people say if you go to the Raiders last, yeah. then that means that's you at the end of your career. But I went to the Raiders first. That's when, back in the day, when when they played 16 uh, games on the road. See, a lot of people don't remember that. See, we when, when they left L.A., when I took L.A. Hey, back to Oakland. Yeah. So we, we, we played all 16 games on the road. That was hard. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, then you, 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 you fast forward to – uh, I say five years later, I'm sitting in the office with Denny Green and Denny Green telling me, you know, he wish he would have drafted me earlier. My career probably would have went different in the NFL, you know, because I was a cornerback and uh, I should have been a safety slash linebacker. But it was like, a, you know, the league was like a foreign language then. You know, I, if you never really had to make calls and adjustments and this and that, that's going to be a foreign language to you. You know, Absolutely. even though now I can set up and make a call and adjustment because now I live it. I lived it and I've learned it. But back then as a 21, 22 year old, you wasn't living it. You know, you were just playing the game. Yeah. Now, 
If I could take that back with the mind that I have now, I'd have probably had a 13 year NFL career, but I'm thankful for what I got. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's a blessing. Right. Sometimes, and, and we've had this conversation many times, right? Sometimes what we want isn't what we need. And right. what, what we need isn't what we want. So right. um, the similar situation with myself in the injury, you know, not being drafted, being a free agent in Tennessee, having success, and then it all get washed away because of something out of my control. Right. So I, I and, and when you say the bullshit, we all know the politics of the bullshit, right? So, right, right. You know, I could definitely dig it. But it's but but that's in everyday life though. So you just can't say the NFL. It's in everyday life. Oh, it's everything. It's everything. But right. but you get a first hand taste and it's kinda it's kinda but it gets you used to it. It gets you used it, to if, if you pay attention and you live long enough, you get used to you have start having thicker skin when the bullshit coming. You will see it coming. You know, I didn't have it in the real world too. Like, oh, yeah. like, get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> oh you know, yeah. Get out of here. Okay, if you're gonna fire me, go ahead and fire. I've been fired from the NFL, so if you don't hurt me to fire me now. So don't give me this long ass speech and tell me something about, oh, I'm, if I need you, if you need me, call me. No, you don't, because you wouldn't fire me the first time. Get out of here with that crap. <laughs> so before, before before we be, I wanna I wanna I wanna fast forward a little bit, then we'll do our Quentin Tarantino and come back. So right. let's talk real quick. I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit. Let's talk real quick about the transition from being a professional athlete, professional football player, being someone who is revered by many, being someone where you see kids wearing your jersey, you see everybody right. different to just being a civilian again. It's, 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 it's a humbling experience. You want to have a piece of humble pie, play 13 years of pro professional ball and then coming to the real world. You know who I feel that know what I'm talking about? A person that just got out of prison. They know exactly what I'm talking about. Or a person that just got out the military know exactly what I'm talking about. They've been on the schedule the whole time, and then now you got to adapt into society. And they tell you to have to get it. You know, regardless, they just put you out to the wolves. It ain't no uh, rehab place for a pro athlete. It ain't no rehab place to where you say, hey, uh, you put your money away, this and that. Economics is not taught in our community. Mm -hmm. Economics is not taught. Uh, we we have been behind so far. So when we do get it, when we do get money, yeah, we go and buy nice stuff for our family and we take care of our family because we are giving people. But mm -hmm. that cost us. That mm -hmm. cost us in the long run. See, we should should have had a lot of money deferred. You know, till uh, if you making let's say three hundred thousand dollars, you can sit back and defer a hundred thousand. Now, right. I should have done that back then. I can say that. But now as an older mind and as one that's been in the struggle, you know, I can tell you, the young guy, man, put that money up and put it away. Put it yeah. away for 10 years from now because yeah. it ain't going to all come like that at one time. You go from getting a $10,000 check to zero. That is a humbling experience. They yeah. throwing you to the woods. Listen, I've been saying it all along. Now you... Uh, American players that's playing in the Canadian Football League, they ought to hear me and they ought to read this podcast. They ought to hear this podcast and be like, "Hey, since the Canadian people are getting medical taken care of and they pay taxes, we also pay taxes. We should mm -hmm. get taken care of too. We are citizens of Canada. Well, we're not citizens of Canada, but we have a social insurance. So that means if I'm pay taxes, that means I should get the same benefit that a Canadian citizen gets." Absolutely. Yeah. Even at this age right now. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And we had we y'all didn't believe in me when I was telling y'all that when I was we, when I was there. Not y'all, but I'm just saying certain people, you know, they didn't believe when I was saying, hey, look, you need to vote me in the rep because this is what I'ma do, this is what I'ma tell them. And you know, now you go back, we've been I've been retired 14 years from the Canadian Football League playing professionally. And the thing about it is you know, you come, you come a time where you gonna need medical taken care of. Oh yeah. You know, like, you know, if we make it to be sixty years old, seventy years old, eighty years, we gonna need our medical taken care of. Absolutely. And right. I feel like uh, somebody should take care of it. I, you, that's funny you say that because I've had the same conversation with a bunch of other former players, and the same analogy you use with comparing 
a professional athlete's transition back to being a civilian is very similar to an inmate or a military person. Um, I feel as though if you give or those- Or went, went to Vietnam too. You gotta add, after, they went to uh, Vietnam at 18 and then had to get adapted back to the society after they got put on drugs by the government. Absolutely, my dad My dad was a Vietnam veteran. So it, I, 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 I definitely understand because I gave 12 years of my life to professional football and it's like, um, you're gonna have situations and issues with your body and with your mind. And it's not as easy for everybody to do that transition. No. Nope. You, you know, me and you had a lot of conversations when I was still playing. But see, you, already, you already transitioned and you, you, you gave me tips on when it's your time to transition, this is how you should go about it. You but see, people I mean? didn't, excuse me, I don't mean to cut you off, but people didn't, they didn't know that I, was, uh, that I was in school. I was uh, getting my degree along with you know, making some type of small investments and, you know, uh, you know, I was doing that, going to school. Uh, man, one time I took classes, uh, I took classes during, during the season. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I didn't walk around telling people that I'm taking classes on the yard or I'm uh, making small investments and trying to set myself up because I see the end coming. You, you will see it coming. And, um, you know, I, I I just was blessed also to have a mother that stayed in my ear, also mm -hmm. telling me, "Hey, you need to get your degree. You need to go do this. You need to go and do that. Hey, you need to do it this way. Don't do it that way." See, so, see, a lot of people need strong figures in their life. You know, Absolutely. if it ain't nothing, but somebody need to be telling them something right. Mm -hmm. I agree, and I and I and I, and I'm a I'm a firsthand believer because I went back and finished up my bachelor's and got my master's. Just the, you know, the same way you did your thing, and and, right. and my mission is a lot was a lot smoother than some of my our, our colleagues because I was able to do that, and I, and I didn't have that. You know, I had some adversity with my mom getting cancer and passing. You know, going through a divorce and things of that nature. But through all of that, I was able to accomplish these goals that I promised both my parents, who are both now deceased, to go back and get my bachelor's, my master's. I'm coaching, I'm mentoring, and we giving back. Right? Because right. that's what. So yeah, I, I I can definitely dig it. I just want to let you know, like you know, for everybody. I did I did, I did that whole coaching thing on the university, uh, uh, coaching at a university. It's too much ass kissing. Now you you say I can speak. Now I'm a I'm a cuss. I ain't gonna cuss on that. <laughs> There's a lot of ass kissing in coaching, and y'all need to stop that. If y'all if, if any coaches out there, listen, man, do your job. You don't have to kiss ass. Point blank. Shouldn't stop kissing ass. I did. Before you said that, I just wanted to uh, let you know in front of everybody, because I've told you this before, I love you, man, and I appreciate you. Man, you know I love you too, bro. That's why I say I, I didn't mind taking you on the wing. And uh, I didn't mind taking you up under my wing, you, Ju uh, Juwan Armour. I still talk to him, all them boys that was there. You know, I remember the time when, you know, y'all was trying to make it onto the team. And uh, I think it was me and Otis leaving, and we was getting ready to go. I had my car up there. And y'all was sitting around looking. What did I do? I stopped and gave y'all some money to get y'all something to eat so y'all can have something for the week. Am I right or wrong? You're right. <laughs> so, you know, that's the type of dude I am. A lot of people got me pegged out to be, oh, I'm just, man, I'm a soft-hearted person. I'm a Gemini. You got two sides. The one that you don't want to piss off like dude in Winnipeg, and the other one just is soft and cuddly. <laughs> Hey, so Ryan, Ryan, I'm yes, gonna give you a pass. I'm gonna pass you the ball, man. Go ahead and dig at it. <laughs> All right. So, Carl, uh, one thing I read is that uh, you got cut from the Minnesota Vikings because you roughed up Randy Moss. Uh, what happened there? That that wasn't true. I mean, it, it was. It, no, that, that wasn't. I tell you like this. Now we had some. You know, I figured this way. I figured. If I could D up Randy Moss and these people seeing me DN up Randy Moss or even attempted to D up Randy Moss, because you got to think, when Randy lined up, then nobody want to go against Randy, period, oh. point blank. <laughs> so I figured, hey, give, it to, give him to me. I fight him. I play him. But that's just me. I want the best. I fight him regardless if he beat me or not. I'm still going to fight. And I think it was a thing where we just competed against each other. And uh, actually – I would have made the team, but it was something that happened that year. And then, but they ended up signing me back again uh, that next year. 
So um, that is, it's a little bit of truth to it, but it, it still is a myth too at the same time. Okay. And, I just uh, live with it because they said it and they tied me in with Randy Moss. So I just go and play it all the way. <laughs> hey man, if, that, if that's your claim to fame, I'll take it. It's right. Not, not, not so bad. So right. along the lines of roughing people up and you kind of just alluded, alluded to it a second ago, uh, in the 2002 West Division final against Winnipeg in Winnipeg, uh, a fan decided he was going to jump onto the field and uh, try and rough up some BC Lions players. And uh, he jumped on the back of Eric Carter, apparently. Yeah, uh, Eric. Yeah, go ahead. So, so that, that could have ended up being a pretty dangerous thing to happen. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Man, uh, well, we was losing. It was cold. That was probably the first game that I ever said after, you know, the fourth quarter was up and the you know, I was like, I don't care if we win or lose. I'm ready to get out of here. Snowballs start coming. I understand. You know how cold it is in Winnipeg. It might start off as a snowball once you pack it, but by the time it make it to that that big old uh, equipment box thing, they busting holes in them. So I'm like, well, we safe out on the field. Next thing you know, we get back out on defense. I see Eric Carter over there just actually plumbing in the dude. So – I'm like, dang, a dude that ran out on the field. So it was more my reaction, more than anything, helping my teammate. But like I say, that was right after 9-11 too. So 9-11 wasn't nothing but a couple of months or a year. Maybe, I don't know when, but it, you know, that, that that was something that was more reaction. I hated it happening uh, because I think that tarnished a little bit of that year with what I had done. No, it tarnished a little bit of what I had done that year. Yeah, I kicked him. Yeah, I went over there, and, but I wasn't the only one. If you look at the video, it was more than just me, uh, you know, chomping on the guy because, um, I mean, he it could have he could have set off a bomb. He could have did anything. So you know, we were just trying to protect ourselves and uh, get out of there and um, live to see another day. I'm, I'm I'm sorry that it happened. I mean, really, really. Years later, I see the video. I can pull it up right now, and you know, a lot of people laugh about it, but. I really don't think it's funny because it, it kind of like tarnished my image a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. because I got majority of the blame on it when, you know, it was it, nobody blamed the guy that ran on the field. They only blamed the guys that was out there now. And we would have went up in the stands and fought the guy. Then, yeah, we are wrong. But the guy came out on the playing field and he was just part of the field. So we did it like that. I'm from Pine Bluff. So, hey, I'm I'm, I'm going to protect myself first. Absolutely. So how yeah, that 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 hurt me. I think that hurt my reputation. You know, I'm yeah. just gonna be honest because that um that um that that Christmas, and I'm glad you brought it up because one of the writers there, man, wrote me a nasty letter, sent it to my house and was like, uh, how classless I was and you know, if I ever thought I was gonna make any type of postseason awards or anything like that. I got another thing come because the media has the votes and I would never get a vote from him. And I thought that was kind of classless because that same year I had probably one of the best seasons I ever had, probably one of the best seasons that a linebacker could ever have. And uh, I thought that was kind of classless by him. I, I think his name was Eric something. I never forget, I, I can't remember his last name, but I know his last his first name was Eric. And uh, he was a writer in Winnipeg at the time. And I wouldn't mind facing off on him on Zoom or anywhere else. I really would like to talk to him. I bet, and yeah, I yeah. Podcast, and I, I really would like to say a few words to him. I had, uh, so I had read that and I, I kind of forgot, but then I remembered about it, but I had read in a media note that you'd actually were crying from that. That would made you pretty Yeah, upset. I mean, I, that sad. year, I mean, I thought I had, you couldn't tell me that year at the end of that season that I wasn't going to like be at the top of the mountain and, and, be like one of the best linebackers and to make all the all-stars and the MVP. And I, I, you couldn't tell me I wasn't gonna do that, but man, he tore me down and I want him to know that he tore me down, but he made me work harder. He made me work harder to where I'm at today. And it's all because of what he did for me. Yeah, I, I had talked to Dante about it and I told Dante, it's the same as wrestling. If you're gonna be a dumbass fan and jump in the ring, you deserve to get beat down. If you're gonna be right. a dumbass fan and jump on the field, I'm sorry, but you deserve to get what you're gonna get. But see, that was that was the same thing. That was right after the. You remember the fans, the raw fans had uh, jumped onto the field and 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 uh, 
tried to fight one of the uh, coaches that was on the field. It was that was right after that. That's why you got to be careful what you say because I said, "Dang, if somebody ever do me like that, this is what I would do." But this was right after 9/11 too. Oh, okay, yeah, the same right. thing. This was right, right after 9/11. So 9/11 right. wasn't that far away. So I, you didn't know if that, that guy had an explosive backpack or anything like that. Man, we in the form, we in another country. We American. We in another country now. I didn't, if I could do it all over again, I wouldn't have never moved, but it was just my reaction. You know, yeah. it, I mean, you can't, we already, we in the field of battle. We in yeah. the field of battle. And you want me to take my emotions and turn them off right then and there? Plus after we getting our butts kicked too at the same time, and it was cold. So they, and you never tell what they was doing. They was throwing uh, ice balls. They weren't snowballs. They was ice balls coming out of the stands. <laughs> Sorry, but that's, that's crazy though. Right? right, that's that's crazy. Like, come and on. I love the fans in Winnipeg too. I do. I I, I think that's one of the greatest uh, football cities in Canada. So yeah. you know, for that one fan to do that, it it, it kind of it could have that 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 whole situation could have been a lot uglier than what it was. Right, it could have been for sure. Yeah. Right. I and now, it. if you look at, you can go to the top ten plays of the year: fan, fan, uh, fan versus. Uh, say athletes, man, that'd be like, that's like number four on the list of all time. <laughs> I tried looking for it. I couldn't find the video of it. It's so there. It is there. It okay. is there. And the only thing the commentator is saying is my name. And I would, <laughs> everybody moved me out the way. <laughs> How was it going up to Canada? And we, you, you, you alluded earlier how you gave me, and you threw me and Jawan a, a couple of dollars. Yo, first shit, going from the NFL, we getting them checks. <laughs> Cause I know, I know that I know that I know the salary went up. So you was in the league in the in the mid 90s. When I got there in 01, my rookie uh minimum was 209. So I was getting between 12 and 14 grand every week. So you go from getting, like you said, bands every Monday or Tuesday to going up to Canada and trying to get on and it's twenty dollars in a no, but see, but see, this is the thing. When I went to Canada, when I went to Canada, see, when I went to Minnesota, I had already set two years. I had set a year and a half. Then I went to Minnesota. See, that was that was by the grace of God that I got another shot. Right. See, a lot of people don't know I had set out, and uh, I was back in school at U UAPV, and uh, you don't know about a guy by the name of Greg Wesley. He got drafted out of uh, you Tall know, Long Beach, Kansas yes. City. Yes. Uh, he left early. He left early out of UAPB. We had a workout, and uh, I went. Uh, Joe, um, let me take it back. My high school coach, Cole Harmon, was the head coach there at uh, Pine Bluff. He talked me into going to a pro day. I was 26, 27, 26 at the time. He talked me into going to a pro day. I went to the pro day. I worked out. I showed out, showed my butt. You know, I can show out a, a workout. Um, we lift, we ran. So the guy from Minnesota never paid me no attention. But I remember telling one of those college uh, guys, man, won't you be quiet, man, and listen to what the man had to say. You know, it was just something I told him because I had already been a professional. Don't you know that caught his attention? And after I had killed the workout, dude never said nothing to me. I get a phone call on a Wednesday. It was Diddy Green called me on the phone. On my own, my mama, at my mama house, he called me. It was like, hey, I got a scout in that area. Want to work you out on a Sunday. They worked out me and they worked out Greg Wesley. He was going to get drafted. That that mate in, in, in the NFL. I end up flying to Minnesota that next Monday. By that next Sunday, I was living in Minnesota. So me saying that, you know, getting them checks from Minnesota. And then once I got released from Minnesota and going to Canada, uh -huh. Now, y'all gonna be mad. I never stayed at the days, I never stayed at the same hotel y'all stayed at. I stayed at the Ramada down on Siri. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Adam Reader put me, and I hope you hear this podcast. He put me there. I thank you, Adam Reader. You treated me, you treated me like I was in the pros. I never, I never saw what other people saw in Canada. I always made good money and I always lived good in Canada. I thank you, Canadian citizens, for taking care of me. <laughs> hey, no, that was joke. That was uh, Adam. Adam took care of me. Like, 
My money really, I went from making zero to making at least six, seven thousand dollars a week. That's what Adam was paying me then. Come on, man. This this Canadian league, I'll take it in a heartbeat. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I I I remember talking to you about that. My first two years up there, you know, 50, 50, 50, 55,000. I, I never I, saw that. No, listen. So <laughs> I was out of football three seasons though. Right. Right, you know, hey, that sounds good though. Fifty thousand dollars sound real good, and it's good. And you know, it was good. Think about it. Straight out of college, and and, and you don't uh, you making thirty thousand. Mm-hmm. You know, so the 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 transition from me, my last time playing football, I was in the league making ten, twelve grand a week. So those first two years in BC, I made fifty, fifty five. But we went to the the Grey Cup my first year, so I made so 60. that was extra money. Yeah, then we went to the Western Final next year. And then when I signed with the Chiefs for that week and came back, I I, I doubled and a half my money. So nine right. out of my seven years in Canada, I made about 120, 130. So I'm very, I'm very thankful for five and a half months of work. <laughs> I went in the league. I went in the NFL making 100. I still got the contract making 119,000. That was rookie minimum, 119,000. That's crazy. That's crazy. Nineteen, and I thought that was the best, Biggest most money. money I ever made before in my life. But the second time I signed with Minnesota, I signed for that million, and I got a nice good money up front. And uh, I thought I was on my way then, and I made I made some decisions that I regret to this day that I could kick myself in the ass for making. But you know, you live and learn. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, can you tell the people? Give us give us some insight on <clears throat> how did you like the game, the atmosphere, the ambiance, the city, the CFL as a league, as your day to day gig versus the NFL. See, when I first when I first went to Canada, see, I remember walking in Billy's office, and uh, and uh, it was a picture on the wall, and the picture on the wall it had like ninety thousand in the stands, whatever. 70, 80,000 in the stand. I'm like, dang, when was this? That was in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And I told him, and he probably tell you to this day, I told him, I said, before I leave here, we're going to have that stadium packed again, just like that. Mm -hmm. See, when I first came to Canada, we was having averaging probably 17, 18,000. Then mm -hmm. what? Then we went to that Western Finals. And then all of a sudden, you got what? 80,000, 90,000. So what? It was close to the pitcher. As a matter mm -hmm. of fact, when Casey, when, when uh, who's that made the field goal when went up under the table when we first when Wallet and them first made us lose the uh, Great Cup the first time we went. Uh, <laughs> what was it? Uh, my my, uh, my, my O'Manny. Yeah, O'Manny. When he when, when he bombed when he bombed when um, Paul McCallum missed missed the field goal, then he yeah. come back and we made the field goal. So that right there, that right there was the beginning to a, a dynasty. You know, I mean, I mean, we ran it for a lot of years. We ran it for a lot of years, man. Thanks to you know, I hey, I know how a lot of people feel about Wally and and this and that, but man, when dude came, him and Bob, man, they changed that franchise around, man. I, that BC Lions was, you know, when I first got there, I'm gonna be honest, it was trash. The the, the facilities was trash, mm -hmm. and, and and man, they cleaned that stuff up, man, and and, and shoot, man, hey. I hope I hope COVID get it back right. Absolutely, absolutely. Bob 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 is the one who got me up there, man. So um, definitely, me and Wiley had a conversation a couple months ago. Squashed everything, and you know he 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 means well, man, in his own way. He a straight shooter, though. Right. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't ask for a person that's gonna tell you like my cousin had died. Remember, me and Wiley stayed into it all the time. Mm -hmm. My cousin had died, and I think I had a bad practice that day. And he told me, if you ever have a practice like again, I'm going to cut you. And I was like, man, fuck you. You know, <laughs> fuck that. I ain't trying to hear that shit. But that was the same. That, remember that year when I sat out and, and uh, sat on the ground I, and mm -hmm. I was trying to make him cut me? But we learned each other that year. You know, we, we really did. We learned each other. Like, he learned not to F with me, and I learned that, uh, you know, he a stubborn man, too. But we came to a common ground, man, and, 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 and you know I love dude dearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know I want, he, he wasn't gonna break, and I wasn't gonna break neither. No, nah, very stubborn. 
<laughs> right. So we was gonna butt heads, but I love dude to death. Him and oh, Dave I Richie. Yeah, that Dave Richie is my guy. That's granddad, man. That's granddad. Let me ask you a, a, a and nine. Mike Benavizi too. So don't <laughs> don't let me leave Mike out. He might be hearing that too. Then I get a text from him late at night. Now I ain't say nothing about him. So <laughs> Mike Benavizi too. Mike Mike's one of my favorite lines coaches of all time. I really like Mike Benavides. Yeah, I'm, when I see him, I'm gonna jump on him though. <laughs> <laughs> he a players coach. He definitely a players coach. Let me let me change speed real quick, Carl. Let me. I want to ask you because I know you're gonna have a a pretty good uh, response in regard to this this question I'm gonna ask you. So right now in the climate of the world here in the the good old United States of America. We're having a lot of issues. There's, there's, there's race issues. There's uh, political issues. We it's have been race issues. No, it's been race. No, issues. no, no, no. We know that, but right. that's why I'm asking you this question because right. you're gonna, you're gonna have a. You're, I'm, a, I'm gonna enjoy listening to your response because you are from the south. So, what is your, what is your take right now on the current climate of what's going on here in the USA? Um, in regards to systemic racism, police brutality, and things of that nature, I, I, I would I would love to, to to get your take on it. Okay, you want to? Okay, we so we, which one are we gonna start with the George Floyd, yes. or do are we gonna go way back? Because you got to go way back first. We know. We, we I know about that. That's why I'm asking. We, so we got to go back to the hangings, and because you know let's they. Start, let's start present. Let's let's okay, start. We, with, with the George Floyds, the Breonna Taylors, let's 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 start right there. Okay, it shouldn't be. It, I, I know everybody got a right to a day prior trial, but come on, man. Uh, these two people, uh, the Breonna Taylor incident and the George Floyd incident, man, you got it capped on video. What more do we need to try for? The man choked the man out, regardless of the fact he had his knee on that man's neck and he choked him out. Some should happen to that cat. The police officer, I don't know his name, but I don't even want to say his name because again, it glorifies him. So uh, the whole system of Minnesota, that's that's terrible. Okay, with the Breonna Taylor incident, come on, man, how can you let all, uh, or would you let two of them go, one of them got a, a bull crap charge because they shot in the in the apartment of, uh, of a white person, but you got other black people around them, other Asian people around them, but that's the only one that he got charged the woman laid out for 20 minutes. They stepped over. The, the officers that did the shooting went back into the apartment. That's a box scene. Mm -hmm. That should be retrialed. And then you got the coon attorney general, then which I'm calling him a coon because that's what it is. And I'm calling the ace of spades. Get on there and lie and tell more lies and cover up and tell more lies. The truth going to set you free. Just like I say, the, the, the old people you say, the truth will set you free. And it's going to come out that he lied. And they lied. They went in. They they they. So a week before the, they even come out with the evidence, you boarded up Kentucky. You boarded up. So you already know what was going to happen. So you no, boarded up. You brace yeah. Right. And then you you want you want to ride because the, 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 the business owners that's in the community, they the ones on. The, the 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 you know the higher up owns the business in the black communities and then they come in they send people to tear them up it ain't us tearing up these buildings and burning these buildings up it's people that they pay coming in to burn these buildings up because we've been asking for a pe peaceful protest since the 60s uh -huh. peaceful protests and we've been peaceful but the other people haven't been peaceful but they 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 didn't water hose us they didn't uh put their dogs on us and everything else and I got one thing to say and you brought up the Breonna Taylor incident and all that. Okay, now where is Peter in all of this? Okay, Peter, they, they have rights for dogs, but then Peter, won't you come out and say about human rights too? Because y'all show jumped on Michael Vick. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I got so much backlash for doing an interview with somebody when I uh, was living in Atlanta and I, it was our bye week. Remember uh, Carl and I had to do all yeah. this guys and you know, for for some for some 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 straight up and down comments that I made, and they but they you, were accurate comments. But you don't even you don't even hear Peter. They had so much to say about other stuff. They didn't have about animals, this and that. But now, 
animals. Okay, I understand. I got animals. I understand. But this is this this is human beings. This these are human beings, black human beings, and nobody say nothing. But then Peter raised so much hell about some dogs. But or or wearing a fur coat. Right. But George Floyd get choked out like an animal. What did Mike Vick hang dogs? What they said, Michael Vick hung dogs, right? He hung dogs. They said that he choked dogs out. He got how many years in prison? Had to pay so much money back. Man, this dude gonna get off. It's it's a it's a touchy, sticky situation. Um, I I, I have my 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 thoughts and feelings about everything that's going on. I just want to say this: until we can sit down and have these open uh, discussions you know, with everybody coming to the table with an open mind. To yeah, but then they're going to send, they, they, we, we're not going to be able to come to the table because they're going to put somebody at the table that's going to agree with them. Right, no, I'm saying, that's 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 my point. Until we can really come to a table for real and have real discussions. Here's the, the issue I, I have. Let's stop talking about trying to understand anything. We don't need to try to understand nothing. Because we are the people that, that 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 all this BS is happening to. Right. They need to understand. Here's the deal. You cannot relate with a person if you've never been in that person's shoes. Nope. So if I don't know your situation, Carl, if I can't relate, I have no right to speak on how you should react or respond right. to anything. You ain't never been hungry. You can't tell me about being hungry. That part. You ain't never been hungry. That part. Right. So I think, I think um, you know, you know, me and Ryan have some dope conversations and that's, that's a start. I mean, that's two people opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of race talking, bouncing ideas off each other. And it's a, it's a good respectful, mutual conversation. And he has an ear to listen. Right. So that's the difference when they, when they allow themselves to listen and be sympathetic to what's going on instead of saying, well, you know, that was years ago. No, no, no. It's always been going on. It has, it has not went anywhere. Right. <laughs> And, and, and you know what? I got. I say another thing. I can't let the prime minister of Canada off neither. You dressed up in the blackface. Yeah, you that's knew that. Yeah, you dressed up in the blackface. I can't let. I can't let him slide neither because I ain't gonna just trash Trump and, and all the rest of. He get it too. Now he. Now he's grown now, but he did do it. And you know, you should say, "Hey, man, give me some lighter color." But you know, this ain't right. So I'm gonna let him slide too. I'm. 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 I'm gonna call him out on that too. That, that it was absolutely disgraceful. That it was that was terrible. Right. That was that was that, that was a bad choice. High school or not, that was a bad choice. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and how the man stays, you know, stays the prime minister. You know, I. Right. I, I don't get it. I don't, there's, right. There's Canadian politics right now are pretty messed up. I'll right. Tell you that much. We're we're no saints up here either, boys. Right. You're right. You're right. It's, You're definitely right. But I, but I, but I could, but but also I, I feel like I can say that because I pay taxes there. So I, I yeah. feel like, you know, yeah. I, even though I'm not a citizen of Canada, but I have blood, sweat, and tears in that country. So yeah. and I do keep up, and I love connect. I love Canada. Love Canada to death. Mm -hmm. Do I need right. to sing the song? <laughs> See that, that that that's a lot of times where I feel like I'm I'm. I gotta be careful what, where I walk when you get into American politics because I, I'm Canadian, uh, I'm, I'm not American and, and it, you know, we go from there. But um, like you said, Carl, I mean, you paid taxes up here. You earned your money, you paid taxes, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on the field. If, I, I think that entel entitles you to a say, why not? Right, right. Same with you, Dante. Well, I, and, 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 and here's my deal. Everybody has a has a has free will and has the has a voice, and you are able to exercise your right to voice your opinion, whether wrong, right, or indifferent. I don't give a damn what it is. We having a conversation. You're free to talk and voice your opinion. It does not mean I have to agree or disagree with you. That's mm -hmm. the beauty of conversation. You yeah. know, two things that start a fight every time: politics and religion start a fight every time. <laughs> they and certainly money. do. And money. Now, uh, they'll let you slide on money. Politics and religion start a fight. That's why we. It, it's a touchy subject. I remember being in the locker room. We remember. Remember we had them, uh, debates. You gotta. You gotta tread lightly, man, because people get real sensitive when you talk about politics and uh, religion. Right. Okay. So they both got and, lies in it. it. Filled with them. Riddled with them. <laughs>
Carl, what are, what are your thoughts on uh, on this uh, whole pandemic, this virus and crap? And then you get like, I mean, I, I, it's real. I mean, at first I thought, oh yeah, but it, it's real, man. When you get to knowing people that's the diet now, I don't know. They blame everything. Okay, if you're in a car wreck, COVID did it. If you did this, COVID did it. Did it. Mm-hmm. now? Some people have gotten COVID and and have passed away from because their bodies can't handle the trauma that it goes through. Because I've known people that had COVID and they bounced back from it. I also know people that have died from it too at the same time. Now. The way that I, I, I mean, I, I'm not gonna put it all of it on Trump because it's more than just him. Yeah, he probably downplayed it a little bit too much, but I mean, he ain't the only one that's making that call neither. No. You know, I mean, you know, I listened to him say where he didn't want the uh, country to go uh, into a worry or being scared because fear, fear is something else. When you strike fear in people, people can do a lot of crazy shit. You yeah, know, yeah. and, uh, you know, I think it's stupid that people talk about defunding the police and stuff because we need the police. You know, we need we need law and order, but it got to be the right law and order. You know, um, you know, I, I'm not going to the, the pandemic, man, is, is 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 I can't wait till this shit is over. You know, this <laughs> it really is some bullshit all over the world it, is what there's a million people that died. I feel like they could have handled this stuff, but. Like say every hundred years it's a pandemic anyway. Yeah. Spanish flu. The Spanish flu was uh in nineteen eighteen. Then you that wasn't nothing but a hundred and two years ago. You know, now it's it, you know, pandemic again. So man, just hopefully we can survive from it, put your mask on, and ain't nothing we can do about it. We live it in it now, so we gotta keep going. Yeah. I, I was telling Dante last night that I can't wait to get sick, hopefully next year, and not have to worry about if it's COVID or not. Right, you're right, cause you know, man, it, it, if you cough a little bit, damn, I hope I ain't got COVID. Yeah, you know? and, and don't do it in public. You no, know, like I say, I got sick, man, in in uh, January. Man, I, I I'm talking about I've never had a feeling like that before. So, man, I I I pray that I don't get it again. I don't know if I had it or not, but the test results came back. I didn't have it, but they weren't testing for COVID like they is now. But I was sick as a dog, and I don't want that again. So this is the kind of the crazy thing too with the whole COVID thing is a lot of people uh, that I know of, and especially you know people I work with, there are people getting really sick back in November and yeah, then before November. COVID came out. November, and, uh, December, January. Yeah, right. So people are starting to wonder a little bit, you know, like when did this COVID shit actually, you know, come out? When did it spread? Been here. When did it come to been North here. America? It's been so, here. Yeah, exactly. I think That's what I think. Here. Yeah. Yeah, it's been here. Then now well, it just came out. It just came out out, you know, in March. You know, they shut everything down. I'm a, um, I'm a teacher, so, man, I'm around kids. Man, it's scary because I'm around kids all the time, all the time. Mm-hmm. And I keep my mask on, and kids are the most nasty human beings on earth. <laughs> my girlfriend thought she had COVID. Actually, she's gonna, she's waiting to get a call back to go get a test. Uh, so I spent the last couple of days wearing a mask in the house because, well, you never know, right? I don't need to get this shit, so. Right. I'm going to say these are my thoughts on COVID. Now, I, I teach. I'm an adjunct professor. I'm a football coach. I'm around kids, too, like like you are, Carl, um, in the high school, too. And then since the whole pandemic thing, I've still been doing my other job, which is training young athletes. I have been doing this for six, seven months, and I have not had a sniffle. I uh, drink a lot of water. I stay active, still work out. I get this sun take my vitamins, and I've been cool. Now, I haven't been disrespectful to the virus. I've been, you know, keeping hand sanitizer, but I'm not going overboard with it. And I wear my mask when I go in the stores and whatnot. Right. My thought on this stuff is, it's nothing but another strand of the flu. Once again, people, these are Dante Marsh's personal opinions and thoughts. It's a strand of the flu. Obviously, the, the, the flu has killed more people than COVID. If you have a compromised immune system, Yes, you can be taken out. Right. One of my friends and his wife got COVID, and they bounced back. Young, active, taking care of themselves type people. So I just think it's a situation where I think it's being overplayed to create fear because there's an underlying agenda going on in the world, and I think it has a lot to do with that paper. Oh, yeah, <laughs> people getting rich. Uh-huh. Richer. Yeah, so those are, my, those are my thoughts and opinions on that. 
Here, here's the here's the unfortunate part of COVID up here in Canada is we have people overdosing and dying. The numbers, you know, the the, the numbers of the overdose deaths are way higher than the COVID deaths, mm-hmm. way way higher, and they're not yeah. doing a damn thing about you know people overdosing. Um, and there, all the all the concentration and thoughts are on on COVID, right? What's that? What, what what's that street uh, in the downtown Vancouver? Where you see all them the, them dope Granville. heads? Granville. Gran- Gran- Granville. Right. And Hastings is bad too. Yeah, yeah Hastings yeah. and Granville. Man, what, what, I mean, what where them people come from? That's crazy. They still ain't did nothing about them people. So I'm going to get my coffee this morning. I'm just driving down three blocks down to McDonald's and I see a very underage girl that looks like she's, you know, been, been into the drugs really hard, you know, and she's looked like she's about 14. That's terrible, man. That's, that's somebody's daughter. So what they, that's somebody's daughter, man. So what they have, so what they have, meth, meth, meth is the drug of choice up there. Meth, methamphetamines. Yeah. Meth, cocaine, but yeah, most, mostly meth. Meth, yeah. meth. You see the meth the one turn you into a zombie. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which y'all got ice too? Yes. Because oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's mainly you can make that shit anywhere. Yeah. Dang. It, it's it's sad. So Carl, what what are your thoughts on the uh, the NBA bubble and um... best 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 thing best thing that ever could have happened to sports? The okay. NBA got it right. They did get it right. So do you think the NFL season is gonna gonna be completed? Oh yeah, they now nah, they going the, the NFL the NFL gonna. I mean, they started, so they're going to finish. They're going to find a way to finish it, you know, but it's hard to do a bubble for uh, football. Yeah, you got, you got 53 man rosters. Right. It's too many. It's too many. I just pray that don't, you know, because they're going to have some cases, point blank, period. They're going to have cases. But uh, I don't think we should shut it down. To my to to my point, I wouldn't have, I, I wasn't a fan of shutting the country down. I would at first, you know. But now, if they would have shut the country down in the beginning, and then now you can't do it now. You can't do it now. It's gonna cause chaos. Yeah. But with the NFL, I pray that they don't have to shut it down. That's all I can say about that. The NBA got it right. Now, Major League Baseball, they had a few tests in the beginning, but I think they I think they didn't got it right. So you know you're gonna have some positive tests now. It's what protocols do you take, you know, and getting it getting it fixed. Well here, well here goes here goes the problem though, Carl. Prime example, you got Cam Newton, star quarterback for the Patriots now. So when you get COVID for you know, from a fan's perspective. Okay, you got a guy, and and even for the organization, you got your number one guy leading you. Let's say midpoint of the season, you're 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 seven and one, eight and one. It's bad. It's bad. Now, now, all, gotta, now he got a quarantine for fourteen, uh, right. fourteen days. So they're right. going to start player. Right. right. And but, it, but let's say, but let's you say knew this going time. into it. You knew this going into it. I guess. Hey, I, but that's what I'm saying. That's the only downside. That's to the, the bad. That's the bad. That's the bad side of it. So that's yeah. why you got to get everybody ready. Right now, COVID is a part of the injury. Yeah, you absolutely just right. Pray, just pray one of them don't die. That part. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess too. I mean, I guess in a sense, it is an evil. Uh, it's a level playing field. I guess. Yep. I mean, I mean, yeah. You lose your yep. star player, but I mean, it could happen to any team. Right. Uh, I would just hope that COVID doesn't wipe out a full team because where are they going to get the players from to finish the season? Right. Right. You know, so right. Well, well, well. Let's let's. I, I wanted to throw this in there. So, kind of glancing at the at the college football scene, I think what COVID has done, it has leveled the playing field, because you because what has happened is I'm seeing I'm seeing lesser football programs go up and sock the big football programs in the mouth. <laughs> right, and it, yeah. and it's also and it's also letting fans know. You can't be using the N word. You can't be saying certain because you can get kicked out. Now we can go without y'all. We still got the TV deal. We don't need y'all here. So it's a privilege that y'all are here. So you need to respect us more. So yeah. now I think you're going you're not gonna hear you suck. You you know blah 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 blah. You're not gonna hear that no more because now they appreciate being there. Absolutely. I want to ask your thoughts on this because I thought this was dope as shit when it when it came out. Um, I kind of when I was reading the comments on it, when they announced it, I kind of felt 
conflicted because you know we we some of us not me individually per se but other black folks you know ridiculing the man and saying that he wasn't qualified this that and the third what are your thoughts on prime time being a head coach at at, at jackson state you might as well hey you might as well let a former uh athlete hall of famer uh what the well, he checking out the box. How come he can't get an opportunity to be a head coach? If y'all call it the children's circuit, so you shouldn't even be worried about it. Shouldn't even be worried about it. Hey, thank you, Dion. If you hear this podcast, hey, thank you for stepping up, taking that job at Jackson State. Name is gonna bring is gonna bring more money into the SWAC. Now the SWAC, you got to do right by the money. Yeah, I. You know what I? Now I read well. Uh, Bo Lewis probably gonna see this. See, he told me that. Jack, uh, Dion wasn't going to get the job at Jackson State, but I told Jackson State needed something to lean on because they trash. I'm a Golden Lion fan, so I really don't care nothing about Jackson State anyway. But I thank you that Dion took the job. He could come down here to Pine Bluff because we need a coach too. So, Dion, if it don't work out there, we'll take you in Pine Bluff. <laughs> but I think it's dope. I'm a I'm a I'm a defensive coordinator at a junior college and I'm and I'm in the I'm in the coaching circuit, so I just think it's dope that you chose a man of his caliber. Because here's the deal, we know HBCU used to be the big time D1 in terms of talent before right. before, 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 before desegregation and before we were allowed to attend these D1 programs. Right, all your first round draft picks and Hall of Famers were coming from the HBCUs. Right. right. So right. I think I think it's dope as shit that you get a guy of that caliber because you you just hit it on the nail call. You gonna get recruits. You gonna yeah, get you gonna get recruits. You gonna get you gonna get money. You people gonna open their pockets, and that's what that's what needs to happen. We and 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 even though I didn't go to HBCU, I was a D one guy here at Fresno State in California. When I moved to Atlanta. And I got to live there for seven years and just see the culture and the and and everything going on, man. That needed to happen. I want that to happen because not not only does that bring back the HBCU legacy and the culture of it, it brings more jobs to black coaches. Right. Because, so I know it's gonna open up the floodgates for for more hirings. Well, I know you said you didn't you you weren't fortunate enough to go. I wasn't going. And I'm just gonna be honest because they didn't have TV deals at the time. Apple. I wouldn't play on TV. Yeah. They weren't giving money away like the way these D1 schools giving money away. Hey, now as far as the girls that was on them black campuses, ooh, it's hard to, 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 to beat. They had some pretty women on them HBCU campuses. That's, but as far as the athletic, as far as where they was living, they gonna have to step up their game a little bit. You know, right. but it, it's, not, it's not the HBCUs it's the government, it's the state, because you got uh, like a, um, uh, let's say for instance, I only go speak on the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff and the University of Arkansas. We under the same branch. We up under the same branch, the UA system. How come the University of Arkansas have millions and millions of dollar complex, but then uh, University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff got a little bit? Why is yeah. that? How come the University of Arkansas coaches and they both D one? The University of Arkansas coaches make average out across the board three hundred some thousand dollars, but then in the University of Arkansas Pine Bluff budget, they whole budget might be three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Why is that a big difference? You know, right. but we under the same branch. We up under the same branch. Up under the same system. Well, I, I think it's a, a situation where they pick and choose. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, you, you, the owner for the for, for America's team went to Arkansas, too. He got deep pockets. So I think it goes into alumni, too. And, and you're right. He gave his money. He gave his money to uh, his high school Catholic. He didn't give his money to the University of Arkansas. At Pine Bluff. But I'm, I'm, I'm talking about I'm saying when you have alumni with that type of star power or financial security where they can give back. And that's why I made the, the statement about but see, you got So you got somebody like Prairie View, you know, they sued the state. So the same thing that Texas A&M get, Prairie View get. So if the state of Texas give Texas A&M $30 million, they got to get Prairie View $30 million too. But that's at the state level. I'm saying right. private owners. So 
my whole my whole my whole spiel was going back to by Dion getting that job. He's going to, he, you know, he, we, it's, it's the frat. Carl, we all a part of that frat. He going to have some of his homeboys that he played with that want to see stuff like that. I had a long, a couple long conversations with Jackie Slater, man. He's, he's so funny. Got great stories when I coached the NFL PA college all-star game these last two years. Very good brother. And he told stories about way back then about the, you know, black college and just, you know, that was some of the, some of the information he was, he was spilling to us was just good to hear, you know, from an older guy, the Hall of Fame guy that been been around the been around the way for quite a long time. Right. I'm saying that is a start because you're seeing with this pandemic and and, and with the whole racial system, you know, the, the the systemic racism deal, you seeing top notch basketball recruits in high school saying that they're gonna go to HBCUs. So I guess my question then would be, do you think that this could spark off a lot of these three, four, five star athletes committing. Might, might not. It's, it might and it might not. Just be honest with you. It, it, it comes down to money, man. It comes down to dorm. You think I'm gonna stay in, you think I'm gonna stay in in a uh if I'm used to living a certain way at home, you think I'm gonna go and take three steps back? Yeah. Can't do it. Yeah, a lot of people say, well, yeah, I'm going to ACBU uh, HBCU, but if, if they don't have the facilities and the finance, then no, I ain't going now. You got an Alabama state that got top-notch facilities, like I say, a peer review. They going to be able to draw in a little bit more talent, yeah. you know, out the gate because they got something to show. But the other the other HBCUs that don't, they're going to struggle too. It, it's not set up for the, for them to make it. You know, right. not to take, take more than Mississippi State. Jack State ain't gonna do better than Mississippi State. It ain't set up for them to do better than Mississippi State. Or Ole Miss. Or Ole Miss. Yeah. Hey, Carl, uh, I read that your uh, first interception in the NFL came off of uh, John Elway. Uh, what was it like picking off a man uh, like that? Good. I got you, John. Now, <laughs> how about that? <laughs> <laughs> That's my one and only. I'm gonna tell you, I was there. No, nah, hey, it was man. Them, hey, just just being on being on the same field with those type of cats. When you when when you playing it, you don't realize it. Like I, I said back and think, man, I wish I'd have went and asked him for an autograph. I wish I'd have went and asked Randy Moss for an autograph, Chris Carter, John Randall, all those type of cats, man, that 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 you got to sit around the locker room, a Tim Brown, uh um, a Daryl Russell, a Russell Merlin, a Pat Swilling, a Jerry Ball, all those type of people, man, you don't realize it when you're in it. You don't realize what type of greatness that you're among. You're right, dog. Uh, I, I I did it, though, Carl. I, I got a ball my rookie year We after practice. uh had Eddie George, Samari Rowe, Javon Curse. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, but, you, but, but, but just but think you, about it. Just think about it as a whole. Like, you know how these guys – you no, know, they has changed jerseys now. I wish yeah. we would have done the same thing. Right. You know, exchange jerseys. So now I got everybody jersey that I played with on my wall. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You know, send me a jersey, Dante. You send me one too. Hey, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I did do that though. Like towards the end of my career up in BC, I got a, I got a, 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 a jersey from from a uh, Damon Allen. I got uh, I got a. Uh, I got Bear Miles jersey, of course. I think I got a Banks jersey. What's that over there? This is the Oakland Raiders, the best organization. Now, right. I don't know where my brick is. I, don't, I hope this nobody didn't steal my brick, but <laughs> this is the case that it comes in. I just got this this morning, but the greatest organization right here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, and I just want to make it clear to everybody out there, they will always be the Oakland Raiders. I don't care if they play on the moon. And, Carl, you know how I feel about the Raiders right. of Oakland, man. So. Right. They Las Vegas Raiders now. Man, I can't call them that. I'd never call them that, man. Yeah, shoot. Hey, Carl, what did you know about Canada before you came up to BC to play with the Lions? Man, you know what? A crazy thing about it, my college roommate, was living in Canada the time I came up there. His name was Oscar Gray. Uh, he was playing with the Seahawks. He moved to Canada. Um, now, we had a lot of, uh, my high school, a guy by the name of Stanley Blair, he played for the Edmonton Eskimos. 
he was from my hometown, my high school. So I knew a lot about the Canadian Football League, but I never thought that I would be there. Then when I was, it was a great experience because like I say, my college roommate was living there. So it was just like I was at home. Once I once I arrived and got settled in, it was it was great. I love Canada. Great experience, man. It Canada exceeded all my expectations by far. And they got the best weed. They got the best weed. They got the cook. Kennedy has the best week. Hey, kudos to y'all for having the best week. <laughs> <laughs> what are your some what are some of your uh, favorite memories about playing in the CFL? Some of my favorite memories, uh, man, just coming to BC Place. Uh, uh, man, just man, the travel, the everything, man. Everything was new to me at first, man. The travel, how we used to travel out east and stay two weeks and you know just have a great time man i got to be around a bunch of great people i got to be in a great country man i everything i cried coming back to the united states i just want every uh, every canadian person to know that i cried coming back to the united states i love canada <laughs> canada 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 like i said man it's dope i i was blessed and fortunate I'm a West Coast guy that I got to, when I did go to the CFL, I got to stay with one organization for 11 straight years, man. And we had a lot of success. Um, we had a lot of great players. Um, Carl, man, is one of the, uh, we got off on the wrong foot, me and Carl. <laughs> but I love this dude, man. He like a big brother to me, man. And 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 we stayed in contact and, and a lot of people don't know. And that's why, Ryan, that's why I said what I said when we started t throwing around the idea of creating this podcast is I don't want to just keep it based on sports. I want people to see the real us because we are more than just athletes. Um, like Carl alluded to earlier, we have degrees, we're fathers, we're pillars in, in the communities we live in. We give back, we do other things. We are more than just a helmet and a jersey that you used to see on that football field. So I want people to know Carl is not an asshole. He's a great dude. I thought he was an asshole when I first met him. Met him, sorry. Um, and we had a we had a little uh, a little squirmish. It's a war of words. Early. I am an asshole. <laughs> no, you cooler than a fan, brother. <laughs> so, no, I, I wanted to give you this platform, man. That's why. That's what. That's why we got you on here, man. Because uh, I, I love you, and I love the way you articulate yourself and your country. And I love your accent, and I love your your, your charisma. And you make me laugh and shit. I want people to see all of you. <laughs> right. What was involved in your ability to motivate and inspire your teammates to achieve greatness at the most critical times during games? Man, just 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 not not losing, man. Losing, uh, winning been in my blood my whole life. So, you know, it comes back to the uh the extra running the extra training the extra doing everything so when the fourth quarter hit that and and the adversity come like man we got to get it together we got to win this game we got to do what we need to do to be successful no matter what it is if you got to poke somebody eye out to win let's do whatever it takes to win that's where i that's where i that's where i want to be i got two quick stories to 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 piggyback on that question ryan so when I first got to Canada, I'm, I'm, you know, dreads, gold teeth. I'm wild. I'm, I'm, I'm looking down on it because I feel like I should have still been in the NFL at this, at this particular point in my career. And um, I'm out there doing my thing. Training camp had a spectacular training camp preseason. They cut the veteran guy for me, et cetera, et cetera. So I had a couple rough starts in the beginning. And I remember Carl coming to me, telling me, saying, well, hey, old Dante. You got them fast ass feet. Do what you do in practice. Do it in the game. <laughs> and I and I, it stuck with me because he he made all the sense in the world. It's that simple. I don't know. I was a, adjusting to the to the length and the size of the football field, and it was just a lot at one time because I didn't get a chance to come in and kind of watch and learn the Canadian game. I when I got there, they had cut Shad Chris after the my first preseason game and gave me the starting position. So. Um, you know, Carl, what Carl said that. And then, and then one other story is we're playing the Edmonton Eskimos, maybe my third or fourth game in 04. And uh, Ed Hervey got hurt. So they moved Jason Tucker to the, the receiver I was covering. Man, this might have been the worst game of my life. 
next to that first Hamilton game up there. I mean, I am, I am, he's catching everything. I'm tipping the ball, he catching it. We're in cover three, he catching it. So I'm just telling myself, man, I'm, they gonna cut me after this game, man. I'm about to go home, <laughs> right? So Carl's like, man, pick your head up, goddamn it, pick your head up and make a play, right? So uh, I've studied film. I was always a, a, a film guy. I studied my opponent. So mind you, the game is on the line. I done gave up about 140 yards to Jason Tucker, and they move. Um, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, Carl number three. Ooh, uh, Terry. T- Terry Vaughn. So they moved no. Terry Vaughn out to the number one receiver. So right there in that, they they had to get a field. They had to get in field goal range, kick the field goal to win the game. So I remember that quick. I'm watching film earlier in the week, and when they moved Terry Vaughn to the number one receiver, whom I cover, they run a quick screen, a jailbreak, jailbreak screen. Man, as soon as uh, they hike the ball, I shoot out of my back pedal and make a seven-yard tackle for loss. They get out of field goal range. We win the game. I remember that so vividly because as soon as I made that play, Carl came over there and grabbed me and was like, listen here, man, don't nobody give a shit about all them plays you gave up earlier. You just help us win the goddamn game. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. But see, you ha- I had to do that because, you know, you know, sure, we, we had to win. I was believing in you. I couldn't be riding you. You know, just steady riding you. You know, sometimes people need to uplift. You know, everybody ain't going to start off the same. And, you know, people believe in you. That's why I was trying to tell you, Wally stuck with you. Yep. I stuck with you. Wally yep. stuck with you. You know how many conversations we had? You know, he wasn't going to take you out the game, so I knew that because he believed in you. And when you got somebody that believed in you, uh-huh. He believed in you, bro. Yeah. Makes all the you know, difference. All these years, man, you can't get 13, 11 years for nothing. They no. just don't get them out. <laughs> that part. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I forgot about the food I was cooking. This this stuff was so good. You know what y'all <laughs> talking about? I, I almost just, burned my chicken. I was just going to ask what you were doing, but you just told us, checking on your food. Yeah, I'm checking on my food. I forgot about it. <laughs> I, I thought you were giving us a tour. I'll give you a little tour. I'm, I'm upstairs now. I was downstairs in my basement. <laughs> yes, Lord. See, y- y'all almost made me burn my chicken up a little bit. <laughs> what kind of what you what you what what kind of marinade you put on that chicken, bro? I mean, you don't you don't have to marinate anything, Dante. You just see. You don't, it up but I'm bit. asking. I want to know because you you a self proclaimed cook. So I want to know. Propane? Man, you in the South, bro. You getting straight wood. You getting pecan. You getting cut charcoal. There ain't no grilling. I don't grill. <laughs> I, don't gr- I don't grill. I barbecue, man. I cute. Okay. Well, no, I, 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 listen, look, let me show y'all something. I got stacks of pecan wood outside. Take y'all out of the Raider cave. I got stacks of wood outside right here. You see over there? Oh, yeah. You oh, can yeah. see over there? Yeah. That's all pecan wood. Okay. I'm just checking, man, because, you know, we all we all like to say we uh, we get down. I get down oh, on the- No, y'all grill on the West Coast and up in Canada. We barbecue in the South, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. Lord. Are the Raiders your favorite team, Carl? Yes, sir. The Raiders and the Lakers and Golden State. I ain't oh. going to take out Golden State. Hey, you can't do that. How come I can't? Man, don't do that. Man, I live, I, hey, I used, my first ever pro basketball game was Los Angeles Lakers. Then when we moved up north, I went to Golden State games too when they had the trail spree red. Yeah, spree for three. Yes, Lord. Spree for three. <laughs> I was there when he choked on boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Sometimes coaches need to choke it. You can't talk to people in any kind of way all the time. Oh, you have to learn. You can't. Everybody don't take the same coaching. You're right. Everybody You're right. don't take the same coaching. They but I, I, hey, I be damned if a young man put his hands around my neck. You gonna see a coach get busy. <laughs> hey, but don't you talk to people in any kind of way. I don't. But, 
But see, we don't get down like that, Carl. I don't. I don't. Right. I, I would never demean or devalue a player. Right, dude. Come on, man. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a favorite Grey Cup between the two that you won, Carl? All of them winning, going. Is all they all special to me? Yeah, I still. They all special. Every last one of them, man. I, I but, hey, you you ain't get to go much, but when you did, I appreciate every bit of it. man. I love everything about Grey Cups. Everything about Canada, I love. You went to three in your in your six years in BC, so that's pretty right. good. Right. See, that's why. See, that's why they need to check the list. They need to check because there's a lot of people that's in the Hall of Fame they ain't won the Grey Cup neither. Yeah. Yeah. That ought to count for something. Indeed, I I I think, and I'm I don't want to I don't want to sound biased because I I got the uh, I was fortunate to to line up with you for 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 some years there. I know what you brought to the table. Okay, Dante, before you get into that, let me say this. When have you known a person now that could go? Now, you saw me at practice. What did I do? I worked one-on-one -on -one with y'all, went and did inside drills with the linebackers, and then worked one-on-one -on -one pass rushing against the offensive tackles. How many yeah. people that you know that could play inside and out and was effective? I've never seen that before. That's, why when, when, that's why when the guy from Winnipeg you know, now I can't say I said, now he took everything I said out of content. When I said, I, I think I had made a bunch of plays and I said, I'm, I'm going to be the greatest linebacker to ever play the game. Now, why would that rub you the wrong way? Because I said that I'm going to be the greatest linebacker to ever play the game in Canada. I wasn't knocking nobody that played linebacker, but I'm saying what I want to do. So I'm putting that pressure on me. Right. Because I still feel like it's a lot of cats didn't do what I did. And then I changed the game, I feel like. For us, that's a strong side covering that's linebacker. That's Sam, yeah. Right. You still can't get nobody to play it like me. That's Sam. You you got to be a unique – you got to have a unique skill set, skill set to uh, play that Sam up there because you got to – you're really just a you're, – you're a bigger – you're a bigger – you're a bigger DB, a guy that's got some speed that can cover, that can play in space. A strong safety. A strong yeah. safety. That's how I'm but, a strong safety playing in but, the box full time. But but it's more than a strong safety because you gotta you gonna end up covering some real receivers over there. Right. Yeah. Right. So, but I, I think Bo Lewis and Eric Carter and um oh dang man. McCullough. I can't think of his name. Man, they taught me the game within they taught me the game when I first got there. Wasn't nobody, wasn't nobody uh, holding back, trying to be stingy. Oh, this guy, who is this guy? He coming in talking shit. He coming in flamboyant. He coming in this that. No, they saw I could play. They gave me all the answers to the test. Yep, yep, yep. Trey, come here, Trey. So that I mean, <clears throat> like I said, it's a it's a fraternity and real recognize real. So even though you and I had got got off on the wrong foot, you you we man, we became the best of friends. Right. And that's 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 that I that's those are the things that I want people to know when they when they watch these podcasts, and that's why I want to give more of us so they could really truly understand, like, man, it's 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 an amazing deal, man, to 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 be to be in them fraternities. You got to show them. Hey, hey, this, this, this my, this my baby yeah, right here. I'm, I'm on the podcast. <laughs> Say what's up, Canada. What's up? Hello. <laughs> How old is he now? My name is Carl Kidd, and his name is Carl Kidd. <laughs> <laughs> you sure all that? Look at all that. How old is he now? He's six. Okay. Okay. Man, your boy just turned your boy eighteen and graduated high school. Man, I'll be wanting to whoop his ass. Man, we we can't talk about that right now. Child <laughs> services will be over here on us. <laughs> yeah, man, he he, you gotta you gotta holler at him, man. I'm gonna give you his phone number, man. Yeah, I I, I talk to him. I still hold on right quick. <laughs> there you go, right there, Dante. Let me see. Can you see it? Oh yeah. yeah. They, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, well, the, the 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 ink went off, but he had he had autographed. No, it's still there a little bit. He autographed it for me a long time ago. Man, he was so little. He was about five or six years old. Yeah, I keep pictures, man. I, 
especially my guys. <laughs> love, man, love, man. And I still want to put this back on the guy in Winnipeg again. I still feel like it still haunt me to this day, and I, I probably won't do it. I, I, um, I'm going to send him, if you can, I want to get him my email address or my phone number, and I would like to talk to him because I don't know what made him send me that Send me that um that letter over the Christmas break that year. I'll never forget that. And that bothered me to this day. And it's gonna sit with me to the day I die. But I just feel like his name was Eric Summer. He was a sports writer in Winnipeg. And I just want him to know that letter, it it, it pushed me to the point to where, you know, where I'm at today. And uh he drove me. I, I feel like I should be higher up, you know, for you know, getting more accolades for his Canadian. Hall of Fame or All Stars and all that because I know I did my part, but he took something away from me. But he also gave me uh, more drive to to do better and to be better and to show him that, hey man, just because you did me one way, I'm gonna do it another way. But I help kids every day, and uh, and I'm a, to the day I die, I'm always gonna help kids and put kids in a better situation than what I was in. So I just want him to know what he did to me. It worked. It worked, but he pissed me off, and I would love to hear from him. So if he wrote me that letter one day, tell him to write me another letter again. Uh-huh. I hear you, Carl. And his name is Eric Summer. He was a writer in Winnipeg, and, 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 and I don't know how much this uh, podcast traveled across, but I pray that it get to him. No, we're going we gonna to get this podcast popping, man. That's 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 we we in the early stages. And we working out the kinks, but we're going to get this podcast big, man. And, and, and I appreciate y'all, you and Dante. Uh, I appreciate y'all so much for uh, giving me the platform to say what I need to say and uh, to get some stuff off of my chest because, you know, I've, I've been wanting to say stuff. I know other guys have podcasts. They ain't about me on their podcast because they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. You already know what it is, man. We gonna, we, And we're going to do it again. This is... I'm for me, I got a lot of love and respect for a lot of the guys. I've I've been blessed and fortunate throughout this football uh journey to 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 meet and, and be friends so many guys. So I'm reaching out to all my guys and get y'all. They got them all on TV. Tell them I'm looking for a spot too to come up to come up and uh, be an analyst. Uh, uh yeah, tell them I got more great coverings and stuff in what six years I got more great coverings than a lot of people on the podium on the stage. Put me on, uh Dante. Thank you for putting me on, man. Hey. For sure, man, for sure. That's that's hey, what Dante, you're tell them how and, and tell the people how you was taking you was taking your classes and then you ran into one of my uh former uh-huh. teachers that that I had and uh that helped me out through my journey in school, and, and you ran into one of them. Tell them about that, Dante. Okay, so let, me, real, let me take over your interview. <laughs> a real, real quick. So I was uh, finishing up my master's program two years ago, and um, I was in this class. I was I was doing my strength and conditioning uh, master's, getting my master's degree in strength and conditioning and exercise science. So um, as some people may know or not know, when you're when you're doing your education all online, it's very difficult. Not only is it very difficult, you are dealing with um, professors that aren't physically on the campus. And now this is pre-COVID. You have professors that bounce around and teach at multiple uh, universities and and, and schools. So one day I got a a question because I got stumped with an an assignment. So I I called the number back and I'm talking to this professor and something told me like, man, because when I seen the number, I didn't recognize the number, but I recognized like the, the area code. So I'm talking to this guy and, you know, he sounded like he's from the South and, and, you know, we get to talk and I'm telling where, you know, I'm, I'm back in school, finishing up my master's. I played pro ball for a long time. I was in uh, the NFL and I played up in uh, Canada. And he was like, man, I got a homeboy that played up in Canada. I said, uh, okay, so what's his name? He's like, he played in BC. I said, I played in BC. He say, Carl Kidd. I said, oh man, that's my homeboy, man. And Tell him said, what you got out of that class. I got an A plus. <laughs> he wasn't gonna get no less than a. Hey, I did all the work though. Let's you know, was gonna get an F. He was gonna flunk if you went to school. We told him about that. You gonna flunk? I completed all that work, but no, uh, it was just good. It's a small world, man, and 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 
and he spoke real highly of Carl. He said he helped Carl when uh, Carl went back to get his degree. But and, that's uh, but that's that's true example. Of that's way you, you always got to treat people right. Yep. Yeah. You always got to treat people right. Don't never burn no bridges, and you always treat people with respect. A good thing gonna come out for you. If I don't say nothing else, talk to you again, kids. Y'all remember that. Treat people with respect. The way you catch a bee is with honey. You don't catch a bee with nothing else but with honey. Yeah, that part. that's huge advice. Definitely. I'd love to have you back on again, Carl. Maybe in a month yeah, or so. Call me and let me know, okay? Yeah, we'll get you back on for sure. This is Carl Kidd. You listen to Inside the Minds of Podcast. Mm-hmm.